train your cabin Read those books in a blink, oh yeah Grab yourself a hot drink cause you're watching how to train your Gavin Yep, that's me Hello, I'm Gavin and I thought on a whim I would try out this booktubing thing um, felt cute, might as well eat later. I am wearing a fedora because I am not showing you my hair. I feel like I'm at my fourth year at Hogwarts. I need to get a cut. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today is a very special video because it's my one year booktube anniversary. So exactly one year ago on the 19th of April 2019, I uploaded my first ever booktube video. Let's not lie, it's absolutely bloody terrible. I mean, I haven't watched it. I think since the first month of me putting it up, I remember I would watch it and rewatch it thinking, this is okay, isn't it? You know, like this isn't me being really cringy or embarrassing for putting a video out for people to say, because it was my first one. I was so scared, I was so nervous. So there's a few things I wanted to do for this video. One, I wanted to watch and react to my very first booktube video. I am really scared to rewatch it because I know it's gonna be cringe. I know it's gonna be cringe. And then in the second half of the video, I wanted to answer the questions that you guys gave me on Instagram and Twitter. I will, I will do that in the second half. But I'm so nervous. I am so scared of watching back this video. Oh gosh. Okay, so let's not pussyfoot about and actually get into watching this. Okay. Oh God. Hello, I'm Gavin, and I thought on a whim I would try out this booktubing thing. Um, felt cute, might as well it later. I just wanted to give it a try. I I'm addicted. I should have deleted it later. I, to be fair, I should have deleted that crap right there and then. But also, right off the bat, I appreciate the fact that I just went straight for it. You know, I thought I would do this. I'm doing it, you know. Booktube. So, I mean, as you can tell by the setup. I'm doing pretty shit so far, but... Very true. For that video, I was recording on my phone, which was fine. I used my phone for most of the year, and it was it was fine. But what I did with the lighting was that I put a lamp at my feet so that the light would come up. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I genuinely don't know why I did that. Oh, no. I haven't really got any natural light in this room. It's pretty dark out. Got my little fairy lights on, gotta have those. A uh, little lamp down here as well that just boosts the light a little bit more. But yeah, Amateur. there wasn't much I could do, I just thought that would do the job you know, to make these and the things that I'm usually generally interested in. I'm boring myself I already. Sacrifice, you will think, yeah, if you did not want choice. And I agree. I may just go straight into the whole thing. Oh, please do. Um, it will live or die, so if you die, if you die, you'll just come back to life. What the fuck was that? Why did I do that? Okay, so I just filmed my reaction to my first video and it was that shit I barely reacted. <laughs> it's just gonna be a straight up Q&A. Like, this is just my aesthetic. I just can't seem to do anything right. <laughs> so as I said before, I got questions on Instagram and Twitter. So I'm gonna try and get through as many as possible. I'm so sorry if I don't answer your question. It might be that it's very similar to a one that's already been asked, or I might just thought it was a shit question. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking. So on, I'll start with the Instagram questions. On Instagram, I got asked from Lauren Ferretti underscore XO, who or what made you want to start a booktube channel? I thought I would do the booktube newbie tag. Um, nobody tagged me in it because I like to do things that um, people didn't ask for. It's a great one to start off with. Like at this point in 2019, I'd been watching booktube for about six years. And I remember watching Jesse the Reader and he was raving about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. And that's what made me want to like sort of start getting into booktube. And bear in mind this is 2013. <laughs> and every single time I wanted to record a video or you know do anything I was just paralyzed with fear I did not want to do it and it took me six years to actually start my booktube channel I just couldn't do it I couldn't physically do it and yeah so I go through years and years of watching booktubers and absolutely loving them and then it got to 2019 and then it got to the owls which is a readathon hosted by Jay Bookrost and that was when I really wanted to start telling people about what I was reading because I had already started The Owls. I mean, 19th of April is when I, I post my first video, but I'd already started The Owls and I was, you know, getting through the subjects and it was really fun. And I was like, I want to share this with people. I want people to, you know, see what I'm doing and 
Uh, I just really wanted to do that. So I ended, that's mainly why I started my booktube channel. So thank you, Jay. And then Lauren also asked most inspirational booktuber and why. I would also put Jay in that category for inspiring me to start my channel. But I also want to give shout outs to Becca, Becca in the books for being so supportive from, from day one. Like uh, looking at my first ever video, you know, Becca's in the comments. And yeah, she's just always been so supportive. Big inspiration for me. And of course, Cody, Cody's Book Corner, Ashley, Frolic Through Fiction, Jade, JD Re Reads. Like they're probably like my most inspirational booktubers. And whenever I watch one of their videos, I always feel, you know, inspired to create content. And of course, I started making more and more friends as the year went on. Law Reads underscore asks, how did you get started? I want to make one maybe, but no confidence. Just go for it. Like literally just go for it. Do not even work. Do not, do not even worry about it. You know, it took me six years and I regret not starting, you know, it would have been seven years ago. I don't want to wish time away, but I can't wait to see where I am at, I, you know, in six years time. So don't waste that time, that valuable time. Just do it. And how did I get started? Well, I just put my phone on my stand. I just thought, you know what, today's the day I'm going to do it. And I'd gotten some books and I did a book call and that's how I started. And yeah. Lydia underscore Hola123 asked, what is your favourite middle grade other than Frostheart? Other middle grades I absolutely love are my favourites. Of course, the Harry Potter series. That is my ultimate favourite middle grade series of all time. And also Pinch of Magic, Michelle Harrison. All of these books I probably raved about so many times. Uh, but also any book by Sophie Anderson, uh, Vashti Hardy. I've absolutely fallen in love with her books this year. Yeah, um, for classics, I would probably say The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Matilda and the Witches. Yeah. I rolled off. Yeah. Lydia also asked, what is your favourite video you have ever done? Oh my gosh, that's actually a really hard question. Um, my favourite video I've ever done? It might be one of my vlogs. I absolutely love doing vlogs. I don't do weekly vlogs anymore, but I did used to do them a lot. I must say, like some of my vlogs this year I've been really proud of. So my Crescent City vlog. Ugh. Ugh. I'll be right back. Really proud of that one, as well as my Akatar vlog because I went to Becca's and I got to meet Ashley for the first time and filming that music video. <laughs> and what am I supposed to do? I gotta re -read on this book too. Yeah, I just had so much fun with that. Maybe the Cozy Little Readathon vlog as well. That one's really good. <laughs> you love so dream it of a far off place where a great warm welcome will be waiting for me. And I guess, of course, my Believeathon announcement videos. I did, you know, the first one last year and then the second one just last month. And I absolutely love that video with my whole heart. I'm so proud of it. So before I get to the prompts, I do need to tell you about this quest. And you do start the Porter's Pocket Inn. And there is nobody better to send you off on this quest than Michelle Harrison herself, the creator of the incredible Porter's Pocket Inn from the A Pinch of Magic series. As you enjoy a pint of speckled pig in the Poacher's Pocket Inn, you notice a shift in the atmosphere. Proud of the whole believe -a -thon stuff that I did. Oh, maybe my Gilmore Gav vlogs as well for the Gilmore Kills Readathon. If you're out on the road, feeling lonely and so cold. I know you know the words, chime in. All you have to do is call my name and I'll be there on the next train where you lead. I will follow anywhere. That you tell me to If you need You need me to be with you I will follow Oh, 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 oh Where you lead I will follow Any, any way That you tell me to If you need You need me to be with you 
I will follow where you lead. I love any readathon that allows me to be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry, like, there's so many videos to be proud of, what can I say? Um, but when I was doing the Book Junkie Trials, which is hosted by Rachel Murray Book Journey, you know, I did a TBR video for it. Wow. Ah. Oh. Just come back from Oak Grove. Little bastards got us, didn't they? Whew. Has nothing to do with the fact that I put on weight since I last put this on, but... Oh, just wait. Those little fuckers are gonna get it. Listen well, all of you. I think that was one of my first videos where I dressed up and I remember making a lot of people laugh with that one so that's why I love it so much. Right, that's it, that's it. Katharina Book Madsen Ed asked the same question, what has been your favourite video to film so far? And yeah, just what I've, yeah, those ones that I mentioned I would say, yeah. Katie underscore and underscore nonsense asked, what is your favourite thing about middle grade? And oh my gosh, there's so many things that's so great about middle grade. One, the fact that it just makes me so happy when I'm reading. You know, it, it, it does something that other age category books don't do for me. You know, it really fills me with warmth, with hope, and all the positive stuff that I'm kind of missing from the world at the minute. So it's great escapism for that. You know, they're so imaginative. There's so many lessons to learn from them as well. Even as an adult, still absolutely love them. Yeah, there's just no better feeling than reading a middle grade. Lily the Book Nerd asks, how are you so amazing? Girl, I'm not. Girl, I am not. <laughs> Il so far, Rebella asked, uh, what do you use to edit your videos? I use Final Cut Pro. I have a MacBook, so I use it on that. Before that, I used iMovie, which was still a great editing software. But now that I've started using Final Cut Pro, I just, I don't know how I ever lived with iMovie anymore. It's such a revelation. I absolutely love it. It's it's brilliant. Tay Breezy X3 would love to connect. Oof. He's got a six pack. Oh, oh my. Ooh, I would love to, to connect as well, to be fair. I mean, I'm hitting you up. Ooh. Lockdown has made me so thirsty. <laughs> Getting to some Twitter questions now then. Uh, Jamie asked, when will, why are people texting me now? It is, what time is it? It's 1.48 a.m. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I am using my phone at the minute, love. Jamie's asked, when will we be getting more big with Marilyn? I'm gonna forever ask this, sorry, not sorry. Well, I'm waiting on the network picking it up right now. So it's in their hands, and yeah, I'm just waiting for the, for the call. <gasps> Why, hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of Bacon with Marilyn. I am your host, Mrs. Marilyn Claus, and I'm going to be making gingerbread reindeer for the cozy little readathon. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, shit. <laughs> there is eggshells in here. Oh, snap. Do, 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 do. Well, that's that. It just looks like Santa came all over here. So as you can see, my first reindeer is a huge success. Oh, it just looks good enough to eat. At the minute, with me being in lockdown and being at home, it's really hard doing big creative videos with other people in the house. I can't do it. I, I, I get so shy when there's other people in the house and I can't do as many videos as I want to do. I can't go out and, you know, be as boisterous as I, I am in those videos. So like with the Marilyn one, I'd have to take over the I'd have to take over the entire house because I cannot have I don't like it when people overhear me talking when I'm I'm recording. Nobody's allowed in the house, but Everybody has to stay in the house because we are on lockdown. So you see my dilemma. I can't do it with other people in the house. So I had this big idea for the owls and it's why I picked Culinary Sorcerer as my career because I wanted to vlog my owls and I wanted to bring back Marilyn. I had ideas for the vlog and unfortunately I cannot do it. I can't do it. I'm going to keep the idea though because there's still the newts. I'm sorry Jamie, it will happen eventually. Tracy asked, where did your love of reading come from? Well Tracy, my love of reading came from my primary school teacher and he was like my form tutor. He would read us the Goosebumps books or you know a couple of chapters before school would actually start and I would sit there really engrossing because he would do voices and he would make them sound really scary. So I think my love of reading probably came from from him and this was primary school and then Harry Potter came out and then yeah the rest is history. Trey asks what's a book you only found through booktube that you rate of five stars? Evelyn Hugo I think is probably the main one. Evelyn Hugo and Scythe. 
Scythe is another one that I, I mean, I might have seen them if I didn't join Booktube, but those are the books that I did pick up because of Booktube. So definitely Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Now, if you want to know what the worst book I found through Booktube that I rated one star and other people for some reason gave a five is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Compuzzle Bev, who has influenced your reading more since you started your channel? Who has influenced it? Oh, um, a lot of the people I watch do influence my reading, so I don't usually typically read epic fantasies or dense fantasies or a lot of adult books, to be honest, but, you know, watching Becca and Cordy from the, when I started my channel, uh, definitely paved the way for some of my reading taste now. Now I would say, you know, those two, because... They've just been with me since the beginning and it's just like, yeah, I just like look up to them and yeah. Nicole also, happy anniversary to you as well, Nicole. What is something you didn't expect from Booktube? Mm, what's something I didn't expect from Booktube? I didn't, I, yeah, I, I've heard people say this before, but the community, I didn't expect the community to be as so welcoming and so embracing and so beautiful, really. And I know there's always that you know, that area of book Twitter or whatever where there's drama always happening, but I never, I'm never part of it, so I never really say it that much, and it's just genuinely, for the most part, the most positive community I've been part of, and I'm just so happy to have, you know, really found a, a positive, happy place, and it's definitely the friends, like, and friends from all over as well, like, throughout the year, special shout outs to, like, Desi and Pastel Pages and Lexi and Alexandra Roslin, because, you know, they live in America, and, you know, it's, it's weird, because with me being a UK booktuber, I didn't know if I would you know, make any friends with American booktubers because I feel like it's a whole different world. But since starting booktube, I've realized it's just one big community. And yeah, it's, oh, it's just, if you were on the Quidditch team for your house at Hogwarts, what position would you play and what booktubers would you want as your teammates? Okay, so what position would I play? I would probably play the chaser, <laughs> but I would be chasing all the hot guys on the team. You know, probably none of them to be fair. <laughs> yeah, just all of my friends who I am, um, friends with are all, are all on my team it will be a very big team <laughs> what would you like to achieve the next year on booktube more friends i see you know there are people who i really look up to who i i feel like they don't see me you know i feel like an ant sometimes and it can be quite intimidating a lot so hopefully in this next year of booktube i can just make more friends and not have this feeling of feeling so insignificant in this wider array of booktube or whatever it is the point I'm making but yeah just to feel seen just to feel seen is what I'd like to achieve. <laughs> Ness asks does making booktube videos influence your reading habits? I find I started reading more YA for some reason. Yeah actually I feel like I probably read more like fan like adult fantasy um, since starting you know doing booktube videos. I felt that's m like me. For YA, I feel like I've probably read less <laughs> since joining Booktube. But, like, does it influence my reading habits? Yes. Especially when I was vlogging. Because when I was vlogging, I was reading less. And now that I'm not doing weekly vlogs anymore, I'm reading a whole shit more. I mean, I've got the Switch as well, which is really killing my time. But, yeah, when I was weekly vlogging, oh my gosh, it killed most of my my reading because I'd like to try and edit them and make them grand like all the other people who I was watching and make them entertaining and fun so that really took a chunk of my time out and then I get like this idea of maybe doing something like when I did the Crescent City vlog you know just like, dedicating a week to something and it definitely does indicate my reading habits for that period of time and I just got an idea like oh I want to do like a midnight vlog. Tama asks any advice for people that start out just do it because you love it. Don't do it, don't get into it because you think you're going to get rich from it. I mean when I first started my main reason to start was because I just wanted you know people to hear my opinions on books and to feel heard and to be myself. Like, I don't know if you've seen the new Dora the Explorer movie. It's so good. It is really, really freaking good. You should watch it. When um, she's being picked on and her cousin is like, don't you say how weird people think you are? And Dora's like, yeah, I'm not stupid. I do say it, but I don't know how to be anyone other than myself. And that is something that, that is my mantra. Well, uh, you know, I'm just gonna take a nice, easy, chill morning. I'm gonna go to Starbucks and then, Pardon me. <laughs> <Come in. laughs> Did you do that on purpose? 
<laughs> but I would definitely say just start it because it's something you absolutely love and then your personality will shine through and people will get to know you as a person and then you're just going to want to continue making those connections and having those relationships with your viewers and it's that part of it that is the best part of it so don't let any other factors go into it like don't go into it thinking oh I'm going to hit like a hundred thousand subscribers in my first year or like and if even if you see very slow growth it, to begin with like don't be disheartened by it because remember you're you know you, you're you and there's nobody else who's going to be like you and you're doing it because you love it not for the views not for the subscribers so just do it so Lita underscore m asked which was your favorite alcre intro to record mine is still the velma yeah definitely the velma one is my favorite <laughs> My glasses. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Oh. Oh, brother. Oh my gosh, like, it's still my favourite one, definitely. I still love, I do love the Kim Possible intro as well, because obviously my singing talents really shine in that one. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm your basic average girl. I'm here to save the world. You can't stop me because I'm Kim Possible. In the backflip as well is just phenomenal. I the Dorothy I, I've only really done three so far. So I did Dorothy, Velma, and who was that? Kim Possible, I just mentioned it. Oh, oh my. Oh. Oh my. So they're really fun to do. Tom, uh, TJ Reads the Stars. Remember, I'll link everybody down below as well. Check TJ out. Um, who are some booktubers who have made your first year hair special? Oh, gosh. Of course, my, my absolute booktube loves. Becca, Cordy, Ashley, Jade, G. Oh, Rachel Marie, Lexi, Desi. And I don't talk with Brit that much, but like basically Brit. She's also been somebody who's been so supportive as well. And when we do speak, it's just so special. So I would probably say Brit as well. Um, there's so many people who have made my first year special, not just booktubers, but the wonderful people who have been watching. You know, I've made friends with so many of you guys and... Oh gosh, like, that's the best part. The best part of it is the comments and replying to every single comment as much as I can and just getting to know all of you. It's been, oh, it's been my absolute favourite. Rebecca asked, how much self-restraint do you need to have working in a bookshop while being a booktuber whilst also being someone who just adores books? I'm guessing very hard, but still, oh my gosh, so hard. Most of my income goes back to the company I work for and that's just terrible. It's just terrible business. It's hard. It's definitely hard. And I have a terrible problem with money. I just like to spend it and I shouldn't because I have bills. But I do it anyway. I just do what makes me happy and that makes me happy. So, you know, when I die, I'm not going to take that debt with me. Katrina's reads as has booktube expanded or narrowed your reading taste and does it make you feel pressure to read more yeah about the reading taste it has definitely expanded I didn't think I would like sci-fi but then I read some sci-fi recommendations from other booktubers and found I really loved it it's a great genre and I yeah I, I do I love love sci-fi and it does make me feel more pressure to read more especially when I was vlogging because I felt that if there was going to be a day when I wasn't going to read then I couldn't vlog and that was quite hard on me because then I would try and read as much as I could and then edit and film and do all of that and also work on top of it and do my other interests and hobbies it was so much pressure and it was really hard to do so taking a little bit step back has been you know so helpful for me there's definitely the pressure there and as well the pressure to read the hyped books as well but fortunately for me I don't read that much YA so a lot of the hyped books on your booktube are YA and most of them don't really interest me anyway so it's fine I do feel the pressure a lot and then I, I feel like nobody cares about what I'm reading nobody cares about what I'm saying about these books because I'm talking about books that people probably haven't heard of or you know I do talk a lot about middle grade and I know middle grade isn't a big 
you know, thing on booktube or anything. So yeah, I do worry about that sometimes. But then I realize, you know what, well, this is my channel and I'll do what the fuck I want. <laughs> Tings Reviews asks, how do you feel you have changed or progressed over the year on booktube? I feel like my confidence is coming out a lot more. I'm so glad it is for you because I feel like it has for me as well. And especially when I was looking back at my first video, oh my god, what a travesty. But yeah, I definitely feel like I've come a bit more out of my shell and I don't feel as, I mean, I'm still cringy, let's not lie, I'm still a cr big cringe, but I, I feel less guilty about it, you know, so I don't mind doing the things that will make you laugh, because I know maybe someone on Guru Gossip's gonna say, you know, oh my god, how cringe is he, you know, I, it's fine, it's fine. That is something that I worked on the past year, yeah, and I'm not self-conscious as much anymore, I mean, I'm still, you know, always thinking when I'm editing a video, like, oh my god, it looks so ugly, or, you know, I think I'm being stupid or something, so it's definitely changed and I've worked on it a lot, so, but there's definitely moments where I, I don't feel confident and then there's been many times when a video has gone un unrecorded because I didn't want to do it and I felt so low about it, so yeah, I it, it, it fluctuates a lot, but at the minute I feel confident, I feel like I've grown a lot. On me. <laughs> Lauren asked, what was your favourite character to dress up as? Oh. So let's go through them all, shall we? We got Maleficent, and we got Marilyn Monroe. Did I actually dress up as Moana once? Done Dorothy twice. <laughs> I've done Velma, I've done Kim Possible, I dressed up as a handmaid from The Handmaid's Tale. Under his eye, may the book open. Turn to page 394. I am a handmaid in The Handmaid's Tale, which, you know, might pose some problems. What would I give to live where you are? What would I pay? To stay here beside you. I've done Elsa, but I did Elsa when I went to the cinema to see Frozen 2 when it came out. That was so fun. So a little backstory here, Halloween 2015 was the first time I dressed up as Elsa in public and I was with my uni housemates, we were all dressed up as dead Disney princesses and this guy in a ninja costume tried to punch me in the face because I was dressed as a woman and yeah that was fun. He got, he ran straight into a security guard though and he had to write me a letter for apology for doing that so it's fine. But yeah the first time I ever dressed up as Elsa I got punched in the face or nearly. So when I went to see Frozen 2 dressed as Elsa I was really nervous, like you have no idea. I genuinely thought somebody would punch me in the face. Yeah, that was really nerve wracking, but I did it. I'm so proud of myself for doing that. And also Resand, and I think I said it right that time. Dressed up as Resand for the Crescent City music video on Becker and the Books' channel it was, yeah, that's also a great highlight. You Woody? You Woody? 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 Yeah. Woody? Yeah. I'm a Woody. <laughs> Hiya. Yeah, I think that's all my costumes. So that there's quite a few to choose from, and I would probably go with Elsa when I went to see Frozen 2 because that was a big moment for me. At Mooney Q asks, where can I buy your intro song because it's magnificent? Well, you can stream that on Spotify. <laughs> you can download it from iTunes, you know, support your indie artists. Oh my god, my intro song. It's gonna have to go eventually. It's so annoying. <laughs> okay, at Bookchopaholic asks, fair people to collab with and some new friends made through Booktube. So there's a couple of people I've collaborated with so far who I've had the pleasure of actually meeting in person. So the first two people I met you know, in real life, were Cody and Jay from Book Roast, and I went up to Edinburgh to see them, and it was so amazing. It's Wednesday, my dudes. 
Look who I'm with. Gav is vlogging for me for Wednesday. I'm that kind of person. Yeah. Always there for a friend. Yeah. He got a friend in me. Oh, I do. And it's so good to see him. Oh. Jeez oh, here. Jeez <laughs> here. So I was very nervous to meet them, but also like really excited because I just, I knew I'd love them to bits anyway. So, and I do. <laughs> I did not laugh while I was talking. <laughs> Alright, let's look at each other laugh. <laughs> <laughs> then it was Becca, Becca and the books. Hey guys, look hey. who I'm with. Do you love this setup as well? It's like very professional. Yeah, it yeah, is. It's like, I mean, it's a better angle than I just had because I can't hold my But it's going to be up. really shaky, yeah. So that's fine. <laughs> and I've met Becca three times in person now. Same with Cordy and G. So what can I say? I'm a traveler. Absolutely loved meeting Becca. Is she so, like zooming in us? She's like really getting the, the details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it was, G and then I met Jade and that was the star paul -a -thon. Oh, now you can tell your viewers how small I am. Oh, yay! <laughs> this took me by surprise. Like, oh, you're not even in the shot, Jade. What the hell? Hi! Hey, she's down here. Uh huh, this my shit. And then we became friends, and like now we're whole second middle grade, you know, book club together now. And honestly, we just could not be any closer. And then the last person I met was Ashley, and I met Ashley at Becca's. And Ashley is a product through fiction, of course. Just touch each other through the glass. And there we go. <laughs> Hello. Come in, come in. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> it's our first meeting. Have you seen what I've done to his neck? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love me and Ashley. So like every single person who I've become friends with on Booktube and then I've met them in real life have just been oh, spectacular, absolutely spectacular. So yeah, and I would love to do some collaborations with them in the future. I think I've only really done the Crescent City music video and I did the Tabior Pursuit, which is Jade's monthly Tabior game. Mary Bronson asked, what has been your most favourite so far this past year? Most favourite... Thing ever maybe I don't know in regards to booktube of course being people but also doing live shows I didn't realize like how much I would really enjoy doing live shows so I, I also I can't keep it clean on live shows as well I always lower the tone first and foremost we need to introduce who we are for the people who don't know um so I'll start I'm Ashley from the channel of Folk Through Fiction which you are on and I'm the host of Bonathon okay awesome uh, my name is Gavin and I am at Gavin Hetherington, because I'm not imaginative at all. <laughs> and I named Monathon, so I feel very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your time. Because <laughs> there's a couple of horns in the last two books. There's the Horn of Yormund, which is the one that brings down the wall. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Dragon Horn. And Mance mm -hmm. said that he... Mance said he had the horn. And then I think it's Tormund <laughs> or the other... <laughs> All the other guys says that he lied about it and they never actually did find it. But no, Euron's got one, and I'm wondering whether Euron <laughs> has that one. <laughs> Stopping Euron has the horn. He's got Euron the horn. has the horn, <laughs> and I'm wondering if it's the same horn. But I'm, so, what's going to happen when a Targaryen blows the horn? <laughs> 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 to find to find the dragons. Yeah, that horn. Yeah. gonna come down. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, my mind isn't like good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> an interesting take to see what happens when they they blow that horn. Yeah. Gavin, there's only four of us, and you've killed Cody. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Done. Gosh, sorry. I, I was trying to find out the name of the horn, though, because. Um, <laughs> I've I definitely came across it. I'm sure it had a name. If everybody just wants to say who they are before we start, I guess we're starting with me. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, Becca from Becca from the Books. And Rhiannon from Fire to the Poppies. Is it me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Cody from Cody's Book Corner. And I'm Gavin from Raphaim Scum. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's why Zachary is like the key and then Dorian uh, is like the door. <laughs> because he puts himself into Dorian. <laughs> yes. 
He penetrates Dorian's I mean, keyhole. You need to explain it. And then he turns to the lock and yeah. opens him up. Yeah, yeah. I get. I say that. I say that. Yeah. You see the yeah. I say it. I say it. Yeah. Never stop. Gav always makes it extra dirty. I do. Every every time. I mean, I've been keeping it good in the middle grade monthly live shows, you know, because you know it has to be family friendly. It's middle grade. But yeah, say when I did Bonathon and I did Read Ray Review and I also did Catch a Book Club, I just, I can't keep it classy. <laughs> and I love doing live shows. It gives me the opportunity to talk in real time with my co-hosts and, you know, my friends and the people in the comments. It's true. I love doing live shows. That's question for me as I should be books. And that is what made you decide to create a booktube channel and what is the best book you've read so far this year. So I mentioned why I made my booktube channel, but my favourite read so far this year would probably be Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, uh, Sega or Saga, Volume 1. Also, middle grade wise, it would probably be Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. Yeah, I think those are those are my favourite ones so far this year. Oh, but I just finished Off Season by Jack Ketchum and it's the most fucked up book I've ever read. That's probably my favourite horror book so far this year. Like, oh my god. Okay, so that was my Q&A one year anniversary video. I'm so sorry. This is so messy yet again. I cannot make a clean video from start to end. I just can't do it. It's not in me. It's not in me. Yeah, it's been quite an emotional roller coaster. And just thank you to everybody who has taken me in. And, you know, what, even when I was, you know, just starting out, so many people just reached out to me and really embraced me. They did not care about sub counts or nothing like that. Just feeling accepted has been the, the best feeling in the world, really. <laughs> like, honestly, I can't tell you enough how thankful and appreciative I am to absolutely every single one of you who's watching this right now and who has watched any of my videos in the past and especially to the people who have sent me gifts over this past year as well. Like, I'm a stranger to you, but yeah, you've you've actually went out of your way to get me a gift and that has just, it's blown me away every single time. So, I mean, part of the reason why I am on BookTube is to make you smile and to make you laugh. So it's why I love to do anyway. So just like from every single inch of my heart, thank you so much. And I better stop because I'm going to get really mushy. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, again, appreciate it. And thank you so much, so much for watching. And um, yeah, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.